Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as we pot up some pre-sprouted ranunculus corms. So let's go. Today is February 23rd, and based on my zip code, my last frost date is about middle of May. So that's about three months from now. This is my third year growing ranunculus flowers from corn. I remember years ago going to a local garden center and looking at all the flowers in the springtime that they had, and they had a whole bunch of ranunculus that were blooming, and they were in about gallon-sized pots, and they were just beautiful. And they were pretty pricey, though, if I was to buy them in each of those gallon-sized pots. So I did a little research, and I looked into what it took to grow ranunculus. I was a little nervous because I did see that there's quite a bit of work involved with growing this type of flower. But I realized very quickly that with some effort, it's definitely doable. And I'm excited to make this video so that I can show you my process and what's worked for me. And if you've tried growing ranunculus before and it hasn't worked, I encourage you to try it again. That seems to be the key with many plants is try, try again. At least for me, that seems to be the key. When something doesn't work out, I don't like to just give up. I want to try it at least a couple of times before I give up. And with ranunculus, I feel like it is so well worth it. And before I go any further, I wanted to thank each one of you that has either subscribed to my channel or have commented on my videos or just watched the videos that I put out there. It really means a lot to me. I've really enjoyed making these videos and teaching you anything that I know. And I can't believe that I've been doing this for one year now. One year has gone by so fast and making these videos really does give me a lot of joy. Gardening for sure gives me a lot of joy, but I realize that there's a lot of other people out there that like to garden too. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I make these videos is to share any knowledge that I have with you. And one thing I've learned with any gardener out there is none of us know everything. We don't know the answers to everything. We're always learning. But I think that's what makes gardening so fun and so interesting. So I wanted to share with you my experience on what worked for me last year. I had done the same process like I did this year, which was pre-sprouting the ranunculus corms. And then I potted them up. I kept them on indoors under my LED shop lights. And you don't want to bring your corms outside until the danger of frost has passed. Many times people grow ranunculus because they have a cut flower farm. And also maybe they have a high tunnel or some sort of protection. And in my case, I don't have a cut flower farm. I like to just look at the pretty flowers. I don't have a high tunnel. But what I did last year was I just slowly started hardening off the ranunculus plants outdoors on the nice warm days. And then on the cool nights, I would just roll the plants back into my garage. And I did that up until I knew there was no more chances of frost. After that, I planted out my ranunculus plants out into my raised beds on the south side of my house. And they did really well there. They looked beautiful. I really enjoyed them there. However, for this year, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to plant these yet, but I don't believe I'm I'm going to plant them in those raised beds. I'd really like to use those raised beds for growing vegetables. And I'm thinking for these particular ranunculus corms, I'm thinking of just keeping them in pots and having them on, on my porches. So I'll be sure to keep you posted on where they end up in my yard outside. We'll probably do that together as a project. So let me share with you some important dates regarding when these corms were planted. On February 8th, I pre-sprouted these corms and I made a video showing you my process and I'll be sure to link that video down below in the description. And after we pre-sprouted all the corms and put them in this tray with this potting mix, this tray then went down in my basement where my basement does not freeze but it's also nice and cool and dark. It usually stays somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And these corms stayed down there from February 8th through February 20th. And then I went down there on the 20th and I took a peek and I noticed that some of them were already starting to grow, not just the roots, but the plants were starting to pop out from the soil. That's an indicator that it's time to remove the tray from the cool area, bring it somewhere where it's warm and give them, give the plants some light. And during that time, I also noticed that the potting mix was getting a little bit dry. So I used a sprayer and I just sprayed some water on top. And then this tray has been just upstairs in my grow area here. 
under my LED shop lights. And they are, they've been looking great, they've been growing, and so I wanted to show you what they're looking like today. So today's date is February 23rd, and I thought it's a perfect day for us to at least pot up some of these corms that I have here. Last year when I potted them up, I potted them up in small little one inch pots. And I'm not gonna do that this year. I realized that that size of pot was very small and I was very quickly having to pot up or up pot the corms from the one inch pots to the three inch pots. So I'm gonna skip the step of potting these up into one inch pots and we're gonna go straight to three inch pots. When it comes to the three inch pots, I prefer to use square pots because I can easily nest them in a tray like this. You can definitely use whatever pots you have, but it's my preference to use the three inch pots. And a lot of times if you have bought plants in the past from a local nursery, you might actually have a number of those type of uh, pots, three inch pots on hand. And also I wanted to mention that Facebook Marketplace is a great place to find pots. So definitely look on Facebook Marketplace. A lot of times people are looking to get rid of them. And also ask a lot of your family and friends because I found that I have just thrown the word out there, asked some of my friends, hey, do you have any pots or any cell packs? Most people just have them sitting around in their garage or their shed or their basement. So it's, it's definitely worth asking, especially this time of year. But why go buy brand new pots if you don't need to? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you in for a closer look and I'm gonna show you what the corms look like and how the root system is looking and then we're gonna pot up some of them together. And you can see like right here that they are definitely sprouting and looking great. And if let's pull one of these out and you can see that the roots are starting to form at the base and they are starting to have nice green growth, which is why I put these under the grow lights because at this point they definitely should be put under grow lights. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fill this three inch pot with potting mix. I have potting mix here that I created myself. I just used peat moss as well as perlite. You can buy your own potting mix as well. And it's already been pre-moistened. So you can see when I'm squeezing it, the water is not coming out, but the soil is holding its shape. So it's perfect. Whenever you're potting up plants, it's always good to when you put the soil in to make sure that you're pushing it down a little bit but you don't want to push it down too hard because it's not good you want some uh, airflow to be in there and you want the roots to be able to grow and if you really push down hard that's not good for the plant and the roots that are going to be growing in there so what i like to do is just kind of go like this you would normally do that on a hard surface but you just want to push the soil down a little bit naturally without pushing down too hard and this is a three inch pot. You can see I filled it to about halfway and that's enough for this corn right there. I'm gonna place the corn in there and now I'm just gonna backfill around the corn. And there, you can see that the corn has been placed in the pot. It's nice and secure and you wanna make sure that you have some green growth still showing above the soil. And it's quite possible when you're pre-sprouting your corms that some of the corms will have a better root system than other corms, and that's okay. And also you're gonna notice that some of these corms are very small and some are bigger. And that's quite fine as well. I will make sure that I will be potting these up individually in the three inch pots. You just wanna make sure that the roots are under the soil and the green part is above the soil. And even though this one was smaller, it will grow and be perfectly fine. And it's gonna take me quite a while to pot these up. I don't know how many corms are in here. There are quite a few. And I've been overwintering them in my garage. I had made a video in the late spring of how, what I did with the corms. I basically dug them up and I stored them over the summer and into the winter until it was time to pre-sprout them. And sometimes if you plant the corn too deep, just lift it up and it'll be fine. This is definitely gonna be a big project for me to put all of these up, but my plan is to have them in these three inch pots and I can usually fit about 18 of these pots in a 10 by 20 tray. And then the tray, which is this size right here, 
will end up going under my grow lights, which are behind me, and they're just LED shop lights. The shop lights come on at 5 a.m. and they go off at 9 p.m., so they're on for a good chunk of the day. And the big thing that you want to keep in mind is while you want to keep these watered, you definitely don't want to overwater them. That's one of the biggest things that kills a ranunculus corm is loving them too much and overwatering them. So just, you know, pick up the pot and you can tell if it feels really light, it's time to water it. Another indicator is to look at the top of the soil. And if the soil looks really dry, it's like a light brown color, then it's time to water it. I like to look at that indicator, but I especially can tell just by picking up the pot if it feels really light. I also have a fan that's running in here about three hours a day, and it's just to create movement in the room. It helps dry the soil a little bit, and it also makes the plants a lot stronger. So you definitely want to make sure you invest in a fan if you're going to have a grow light system. As big or as small as it is, it's always good to that, have that air circulation going. And sometime within the next month, I will slowly start transitioning all of my ranunculus outdoors. I have a big rolling cart, and it's a three-tier cart that my husband put together using just scrap material from our yard, from our barn. And I love that. I can roll it right outside. The plants on there can get the sunlight that they need. They, they're, they get used to basically the atmosphere, the wind, the rain. But then on those cool nights, because we still, we just had snow this morning. So on those cool nights, I can just roll that back inside. And I'll be sure to take you along with that process when I start hardening these off. And the other thing I'll be sure to do is I will be doing seedling tours probably about every two weeks. And when I do a seedling tour, I'll give you updates on the ranunculus just so you can see how they're looking. And if you've never tried ranunculus, now is the time. You can usually go to a big box store and you can buy a packet of the ranunculus corms and then just watch a video. I, I will link one in the description, but other people have created them as well. That just shows you the process for pre-sprouting your ranunculus corms. I sure hope this video motivated you to try ranunculus if you've never tried them or if you have tried them and it hasn't worked well for you. Hopefully this motivated you to try again. And until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.